everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live on this beautiful Monday, wherever you are joining from. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. I'm just uh, hopping on a little bit late here. Let me get set. Uh, first, let me welcome everyone to the chat. Welcome everyone to the stream today. We are doing a pro tips all inside of Premiere Pro. It's a motion Monday, so I'm very excited to be here and uh, kick things off uh, with you on this Monday morning. Give me one second here. Again, sorry about that, everyone. We are just uh, just getting loaded and ready to go. Awesome. Alrighty, so uh, we're gonna run a little bit lower on time today, uh, just hopping on here a little bit late. But in today's stream, uh, first of all, before we get into the stream, I just wanna let everyone know if you're not a part of the Adobe Live community, make sure to subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel, follow us here on Behance and follow along in the chat. We have some amazing people in the chat today joining us. And if you have any questions for me over the next 20 minutes about what we're gonna be getting into today, please let me know and uh, I will be taking a look at that. So I'm gonna just hop right into it and we are gonna cut over to my screen. All right, so today what we are going to be going over is all about this technique of J-cut or L-cut editing in your workflow. So as a video editor, there's two sort of common most used practices uh, of how to cut your clips together using your audio, and that is one being a hard cut. So a hard cut where you have your video and your audio clips hard cut to your video and audio of the next clip. Or in this case, what we're going to be going over today is leading your next clip with the audio uh, right below your clip. So that is, for whatever reason, known as a J cut or an L cut. If anyone in the chat knows sort of where that definition comes from or why it got that name, I unfortunately do not know, but I do know sort of the best practices of what you can do at home to create sort of the most cinematic um, editing in your workflow. So I'm just gonna play back a video that I recently made that's up uh, live on my Instagram account as of this morning. I'm just gonna play about like 20 seconds back so you can sort of hear what I'm talking about and let some of this video uh, do the talking for me. So let me just go ahead and press out on my keyboard and just render this in and out real quick. Um, as we're getting started here, I just wanna pull up the chat so that we can do our thing. Alrighty. And here we go. In today's video, let's talk about a common editing technique known as a J cut or an L cut and why it's so effective. There's essentially two basic. Okay, so basically what we're what we're doing here throughout this cut is you can kind of see the timeline being a little bit crazy. It's a uh, I don't want you to in be intimidated by what this timeline looks like, but really what I want to kind of get across today is the importance of layering your audio before you see the next visual in your uh, clip, okay? So let me just move. Yeah, I think I'm good there on the bottom. Again, sorry about that, everyone. We are just, uh, just getting situated here. I just wanna make sure the chat is open. So if anyone has any questions for me, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go. Awesome. All right. Voodoo Val, Josh, Robert, what is up, gang? Stoked to be here. Again, sorry for the tardiness today. I was having some sort of technical difficulties on my end. Okay. All right. So what I want to uh, mention is I shot all this, all this sort of footage. Uh, if we scrub through here, all this footage was shot over the last like week or so when I was out west in San Francisco. And all of these clips do have some camera audio, but the problem with a lot of this camera audio is it doesn't it doesn't sound as crispy. So I wanted to try to build this audio timeline to show you all here on uh, the stream. And as you can see, if we're like zooming in here, I press option and plus on my keyboard, that will actually maximize the audio track. If I press control or if I press command plus, it'll expand my video track. Just another nice little tip to have. And you can see here that I, I try my best to sort of name, uh, if we're looking at the left-hand side here, I try my best to name some of these tracks so that I know what I'm working with. My first track being sort of the camera audio. So if I solo some of this, this is audio that was actually recorded on the camera. And in this case, I had a little lav mic, so I didn't really record anything there. You know, you can kind of hear um, 
some of that camera audio of this little uh, fortune cookie factory, which was really cool in Chinatown. And so I try to like keep a lot of that camera audio on one track. And the reason being, uh, which hopefully we'll get into a little bit today, is I wanna try to mix like audio together so that it sounds uh, the best when I'm when I'm exporting my footage. Okay, and then everything below this, if we see we have a sound effects one, sound effects two, and then these are all sound effects as well and some music down below, which I kind of ran out of time to label. But if you're at home and you wanna label these, just right click and you can label this sound effects three. And then here I have my dialogue. So this is my dialogue or my voiceover uh, of the actual video and I've color coded it so that I know exactly where I need to kind of land some of these sound effects to create that J cut or that L cut, all right? So as you can see, I use a lot of um, these like points or cross fades or cross dissolves on my audio. And this is really the power of leading your next visual with audio before we actually see what's next. So let me try to pull out a point here and try to use that as an example, okay? So we're gonna mute the music here, okay? Kind of like a little, Sounds very like Pixar, Pixar like for some reason, um, which I'm, which I'm on board with. All right, J Channel. I noticed you used it. Oh, that's so crispy. Yes, because the shape of those cuts. Oh, okay. Well, so now we found out in the chat here. Josh said that the J or L cut. It's because the shape of those cuts resemble the letter shape. Very interesting. Did not know that. Glad I know that now though. All right, so we can see here, we have a lot of different sound effects kind of layered on this track. So if I solo this one, you can actually hear, and this is a uh, like sound effects that I've sourced from uh, a uh, music site called Artlist. Uh, it's a copyright free site that I pay for yearly to be able to source clips like this if I don't actually record them on my camera. There are plenty of other options, um, but this is just one that I've used, and we go up into our bin here, you can see how many different sound effects I've actually sourced, you know, for what we're trying to get into. Okay, so I'll build my video first, and then I start to layer in my sound design. So again, we solo this, you'll see that that sound comes in before we actually see me walking in the woods. And that is the entire point. You know, like you can very easily do a hard cut where you hear that sound come in on the next visual, but I think it just builds a little bit more anticipation. It builds a little bit more suspense to the viewer questioning, oh, I'm, you know, anticipating the clip that's coming next or the scene that's coming next, okay? So that's one little sound here. If we solo this one, You can see that I did the exact same thing with this sound for me going from here to maybe the sound or the ambience of some sort of park. Um, in this case, this was like Washington Park in San Francisco and I didn't really get clean audio. So again, like this is just uh, city park traffic, rumble birds, you know, you can use so many different sort of uh, sound effects to really build that track out and to create uh, your sound design, okay? So if we uh, solo this here, that's actually our music. So we're gonna turn that off for now. And then if I solo this track here, you know, my timing is a little bit off, but you can kind of see that I have this, um, you know, just a really nice sneakers walking on the grass. And if you wanted to actually time these properly, you could come in here and on each step, maybe press M on your keyboard and that sets a marker, press M on the next one, that sets a marker and let's maybe try to time this. So let's see, we have, there's the step, let's scooch this over a little bit, okay. And maybe we wanna actually slow that down a little bit because it seems like I'm walking a little bit faster. So we're gonna go here, let's go to like 90%. Actually, it should go a little faster I think than that. So a little bit better, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. Again, this is like something that if you were really, really trying to be specific, you would create your own Foley, you might record your feet doing these steps as you're recording this. But in this case, just to show you the process of this sort of J-cut technique, this is what we're using here. Okay, so again, down the timeline we go. I'm gonna keep this muted. And do we have anything soloed up here? We do, we have our camera audio soloed. 
All right, so this is another good example here if I solo this. This does not at all sound like a city park, but I just like liked the sound coming from here to here. So it's almost like a reverse J cut in that way. Um, but let's go down this a little bit. So let's go into here. And again, we have these color codes here so that we know where our camera audio is, where our voiceover is, so that we can easily layer things on top of each other. And I think the importance of sound design uh, and this sort of technique is not to be afraid of just continuously stacking different uh, audio clips on top of each other. I mean, this is a fairly uh, simple timeline here, but you can continue to stack and stack and stack and stack. And what that does is that allows you to actually take your audio and sort of drag that out and create those really smooth transitions before you get into the next clip. Okay, so that's sort of the, the power behind this sort of technique here. <clears throat> Awesome. All righty, I hope everyone is doing well today. Again, for those that are joining us late, this is a Motion Monday Pro tip. Uh, we have plenty of these on the Adobe Live YouTube channel, so please make sure to subscribe over there uh, for more tips and tricks from amazing creators in this community. All right, so we soloed this. Let's actually go and solo. Yeah, let's solo that. What do we got there? Okay, so this is the camera audio of this little factory. I didn't really know of another good sound to pull from, but basically all I'm doing here, I'm gonna reverse engineer this. Let's drag this down, okay? All I'm doing, for those that are beginners here, is I have these points, okay? So like your visuals above, you can create opacity. Your audio below, if you right click and you show your keyframes, we have your channel volume, or we have your volume, okay? In this case, my volume level, I believe in the beta version, you have a little bit more customization, but we're in the, the uh, public version right here. But I'm just gonna press P on my keyboard. This creates a little point here with the pen tool. And then I'm just gonna drag this down, okay? And this allows me to then slowly bring in that next sound effect. And I'm bringing, you can see, I'm bringing this in before I'm even done speaking. Um, so I wanna actually pull this whole thing down a little bit so that the audio is not completely distracting from what I'm saying. Sweet, okay, so the timing of where you layer these edits in is completely up to you. I think over the years of doing this, um, I've kind of just come to train myself to hear when I should be hearing another clip or another audio clip coming before the visual. So again, it's all sort of part of the practice here. Okay, and if I keep playing this, this technique is basically okay so we're gonna go here we're gonna just keep on going okay so here again very just like use the power of these shortcuts to help you manage your timeline okay that's like the biggest takeaway i think i can give you from uh, this edit, this isn't really like a style of editing. This is just something as a professional video editor, uh, you will be using this. This is something that is sort of the bread and butter of creating uh, films that have movement and pace and anticipation or videos like this that you can continue to layer. Just imagine, I like to compare it to sort of building complex dishes in the kitchen or adding different ingredients. This is your you know, this is your palette here and you're adding and continuing to add ingredients on top of it to build the best meal that you can essentially. This allows that anticipation. Okay, so let's just mute my dialogue. All right, so you can kind of hear. Here we have uh, all these different sounds going on behind the music, behind the voiceover. We have these flags. Okay, and then this is actually the camera audio or no, this is sort of like audio that I, again, sourced uh, a cable car inside of a cable car. So even though we're not inside of a cable car, this clip is actually from a uh, like a cable car factory in San Francisco. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to like pair those thing two things together. So you can see if I solo this, you know, that audio clip is starting almost two seconds before the clip itself comes in. Okay, so again, this is like, this is not a novel technique. This is not some sort of a mind blowing uh, feature inside of Premiere Pro, but this is, I think, one of the most fundamental use cases of how to edit your sound and your audio in your videos to just make you a better filmmaker, make you a better editor, and sort of start to 
uh, train yourself to hear things before they happen as an editor so that as the viewer, you're hearing that as well, okay? So I'm kind of coming low on time. I Again, I'm... I was a little uh, a little late today here, gang, so I'm trying my best to squeeze as much in as possible. Let me go right back here. All right, and then we can kind of see down the line we go. We have this park here. So if I solo this track, again, I'm just pulling these down. And again, a shortcut shift plus expands everything on your timeline. You can kind of come in here and you can see, all right, maybe we just want to look at our video right now. So I'm going to shorten all my video and now I have access to view my audio clips on the biggest, you know, the biggest way. And you can pull these down even more. You can get really, really granular with it. So lots and lots of different functionality here inside of Premiere Pro. Let's solo this track. Again, now we have the sounds of a park. Uh, this was something where the park was actually beautiful that day and I did kind of record some audio like that. But another tip for filmmakers out there and video creators is if you can record the audio while you're out in the field, it is so much more beneficial than having to go in and build all these from scratch. But the power of the internet and sourcing from some of these sites, even inside of Premiere Pro in the audio tab uh, right here, you have the ability to actually source a lot of those sound effects and music inside of Premiere Pro if you did not go out and record it. Okay, and for my personal preference, if you were to do this, I would say bring either an audio recorder of some kind. I use a Zoom or a Tascam recorder uh, or have some sort of like shotgun mic on your camera. They're pretty cheap these days and picking one of those up allows you the flexibility when you're in the edit to come in here and add these sound effects as sound effects and you've already shot them. You've done, you know, three quarters of the work already. All right. Uh, any other questions in the chat here? Uh, and again, this is uh, Artlist. This is the site that I use. Again, like I was mentioning, I'm sure there's other people in here that do it. And there's a whole sound effects tab that you can really search for hours on getting the best sound effects. And I highly recommend that you go and save a lot of those sound effects so in the future. You can kind of build a library out that you can use to... Uh, to keep on hand when you need them uh, down the line. All righty. Uh, well, everyone, <laughs> that felt extremely quick. Uh, thank you again to those who tuned in. Sorry about my little tardiness here. Technical problems do happen here on Adobe Live, but we're powering through them. And uh, again, I appreciate you all for letting me share some of my knowledge inside of Premiere Pro when it comes to video creation and going out and shooting your own content. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please make sure to do so. Stick around. I'm sure there is a ton of amazing content on this Motion Monday here on Adobe Live. And uh, if you missed this video, you can head over to the YouTube channel, follow along. And yeah, follow me uh, on Instagram, on TikTok, on not really on Facebook, but you can uh, follow me on the socials and shoot me a DM if you are here. And if you have any questions in the future, uh, I am really looking forward to hearing from you all. So that is it. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I will leave you with a little outro slide to join the Discord channel and uh, be a, a bigger part of this community. So thank you, thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your week.